Briefly, before I begin, I apologize for being gone so long. I'm sure there's at least a few of you who really enjoy the content on my channel, so I am sorry about the spotty chef dates and delay here. My health took a bit of a turn combined with the excitement of the holidays, so I've had to take things slow, especially as of late. Anyways, the sequel movie to Expelled from Paradise has finally been announced, and the movie looks to be slated for later this year, 2024. The source material for the sequel to the first part movie, Expelled from Paradise, Rocco and Zonkyo, Godspeed, You, is probably out there somewhere, but you'll have to do some digging, unfortunately. I legit couldn't find any version of the novel anywhere. We have the first teaser trailer available at least, and there are some things to go over, plus I'll be talking about where I think the story might be headed. Before that, this is the part where I shamelessly plug the channel and ask you to subscribe. I mean, it's not like you have to but it would make me happy. Let's break things down. The movie is set in the year 2400 after much of the Earth's population left the surface for virtual lives in D.Va. However, after D.Va is hacked, Angela Balzac is given one mission. Find the hacker known as Frontier Setter and destroy them. She rendezvous with an agent on the surface, Dingo, and together they're tasked with discovering who or what Frontier Setter is, restoring the peace to D.Va. But all is not as it seems as Angela begins to learn what being human is all about and how it will ultimately affect her mission. The story is a good one, and for it being a 2014 film, the CGI is excellent. I can't stress that enough. But that isn't what I'm here to talk to you about. Instead, let's talk about the coming sequel to the first movie. If you don't want to be spoiled, I suppose you can leave, but you have to come back after you finish watching the movie. Yes, now you have homework. So, where did the first movie leave off? Truthfully, with Angela and Dingo in the car together, driving off to who knows where, it really made for the perfect ending. Angela has slowly come to terms with being human rather than living in an idolized world with a virtual body, unaware of the human condition. Frontier Setter has set off into outer space in search of those who might join his crew, if he still finds anyone. It's a happy ending, and honestly, it easily could have gotten away with ending the entire story right then and there but it didn't. A decade later, and here we are with an announcement to the second part of the story. Raku and Suiho Kokoro no Resonance, or Expelled from Paradise, Residence of the Heart. I have no idea why any list has this title liberated from paradise. The translation doesn't match up as the kanji for Rakuen, Paradise, and Kokoro Heart are there alongside the katakana, Regenansu, Resonance. I guess, in a way, Angela's escape from the clutches of D.Va can be seen as liberation, but that is not the official title. The teaser trailer for the sequel movie didn't offer much, but there's enough there to speculate on. The trailer opens with Angela walking through a blizzard, though we don't know where she's headed and why. Her face looks almost vengeful, like something happened that personally upset her. That is that kind of face, and the following scene seems to hint that something happened to Dingo. Before I get any further, I'm going to be so upset if something happened to Dingo. He's literally one of my favorite male characters. Anyways, but what looks like some kind of shed door opens, and Dingo's guitar is laying on a metal crate of some sort. We don't know why it's there, or where Dingo is, but as I previously mentioned, Angela's face seems to hint at something being wrong, and... Well, this is tomodachi itanda, the word for friend in the past tense of the verb itamu, which means to lament, grieve, to mourn. Japanese is very situational, and there's no one-to-one -one translation as I've said in the past, so this likely means something along the lines of, my friend, I mourned, or I mourned, my friend. There's a comma between the two words, which is probably meant for dramatic effect. Either way, it's not directly saying that Angela mourned her friend, per se. Instead, this seems more like she's addressing the subject of whoever friend is supposed to be. There aren't any words that specifically translate as I or my, such as watashi or boku, but it's inferred this is Angela as she was in the opening scenes and the main character of the story. Dingo's guitar and the friendship Angela built with Dingo throughout the first movie indicate that this is Dingo she's talking about. Frontier Setter is far from Earth at this point, so it can't be him. Another bit that factors into this being Angela's pain comes from the song Aeonian, both heard mid-movie and at the end of the movie as the ending theme. There's a specific line that goes, Itami o nando kanjita daro. How many times have I felt the pain inside of me? 
This is a direct translation as there's an English version of the song by Elisa as well. If I had a dime for every time I played that song in my car at night, I'd probably be several thousand dollars richer. So now that we pretty much know it's Angela that's grieving, the question is why? Who specifically is she grieving over and where is Dingo? In all likelihood, it's Dingo whom she's grieving over, though we can't be for certain. We know Angela was expelled from Paradise, Diva, in the first movie. So now we question, how does this retelling end? You're wondering, what do you mean by retelling? The movie Expelled from Paradise is a creative retelling of the story of the Garden of Eden. Angela is tempted by Frontier Setter and his humanity. She volunteered to have her material body's age reduced to that of a 16 years versus an older, more mature body that she was used to. This hasty reduction and in incubation signals her desire to get down to the surface of the Earth as soon as possible. But once she arrived and found that Frontier Setter meant no harm, she gave in to the temptation of his humanity even though Frontier Setter is an artificially intelligent robot. Starting to see some similarities in modern day here. Angela is Eve, Dingo is Adam, and Frontier Setter is the Serpent. Eve eats the forbidden fruit first, then offering some to Adam. In this case, the symbolism of the fruit is Frontier Setter's humanity, but not Frontier Setter's alone. As Angela gets to know Dingo more, his own humanity rubs off on her, in some ways making Dingo a serpent as well, despite his mentoring role. Dingo's relation to the story, though, is quite a bit more complex than that. We often understand that Adam and Eve were both tempted by the serpent in the garden, yet Adam's role in this has been questioned. The actual Hebrew text does not use the words, who was, mystifying who Eve's actual husband was. We presume it to be Adam, but the Bible also fails to mention why. If Adam was also the target, he didn't speak up and was noticeably absent from the exchange Eve had with the serpent. So, while not a direct reference, Dingle's own mysterious nature and motivations bring him more in line with the mysterious nature of Adam. Whether or not this was intentional is hard to say. If you're still not convinced this is a retelling, think about how Angela had a material body made so that she could join her agent Dingo on Earth. God made Adam first, and then made Eve as a companion for Adam. This dynamic is seen with Angela and Dingo. Similarly, Dingo is a mentor to Angela as she navigates Earth for the first time in her life. In the Bible, it's generally accepted that Adam's role was that of leadership and as a potential model for Eve. Obviously, that fell through after Eve was tempted to eat the fruit and eventually consumed it with Adam. Finally, we look towards the symbolism behind a name. Frontier Setter is self-explanatory, but Dingo is an interesting case. I always thought it was odd that Dingo's name was, well, Dingo. Come to find out, this likely wasn't just a random pick. Dingles are an ancient lineage of dogs found in Australia. Location doesn't matter in this sense, but their symbolism does. Of the many things dingles symbolize, adaptability and change are the most prominent. Think, Angel's introduction to his life creates huge change, especially at the close of the movie where the two drive off to the desert. Dingo now has a companion and friend and symbolizes the change in his and Angela's lives as well as frontier setters. This movie has an absolutely incredible amount of thematics if that wasn't already evident. With that, let me now offer where I think the sequel is going to take the story. The snow is a huge part of this as it's evident that Earth still has more biomes than just desert, which we assumed were the only variety. This means that either something has happened on Earth, there are more biomes, or perhaps the weather is being manipulated in some way by D.Va. After all, Angela and Dingo are a threat to the stability of the system. To think that D.Va could attempt to play God is not unreasonable, though I do think this is on the weaker side of plausibility. We know D.Va wants to weaken the relationship. There's no word on whether or not the sequel movie will adapt any of the source material, which is why there's such a big question mark hanging over the movie at the moment. Angela and Dingo have formed a strong relationship, and as previously mentioned, are threats to D.Va. It's possible D.Va sent agents to Earth to eliminate them, Angela, with the help of Frontier Setter, hacked their entire weapon system, so there's little chance they don't pursue her after such, and this is just one of several major infractions performed by Angela. Was Dingo killed by these agents, leaving Angela alone to avenge his death and enact her revenge on D.Va? Does she somehow find Frontier Setter again and ask for his help? This is kind of unlikely because Frontier Setter was the most pacifistic of all the characters. Yet, at the same time, we look towards Ionian again in the line, Yes, we can meet again someday, so long. Does the ending theme actually set the stage for several major plot events in the sequel? 
Either way, something has clearly upset her, and her face is plastered with that specific look of, you screwed up. It's hard to say what the sequel novel says about this, if at all, as it's hard to find, and even harder to find someone who's read it. Sadly, I am not in that group. There is a large emphasis on the humanity presented in this movie, and that humanity is all-encompassing, not just a term that can be plastered on people. After all, with the rapid rise of artificial intelligence over the last year alone, what will we call them when they undoubtedly begin to show compassion, emotion, and humanistic intelligence? For a deeper dive into the relationship between anime and AI, I'd recommend you go watch this video. For a better understanding and analysis on AI versus humanity, check out these videos. So where does that leave us? Well, we have limited information available to us about the sequel movie currently, but it seems Angela will reprise her role as the main character. Dingle seems to be missing, and there seems to be a direct link of his absence towards Angela's motivations. Again, this is a difficult novel to find if you don't want to deal with sketchy third-party Amazon sellers that charge an arm and a leg. Does the movie directly reference the story of the Garden of Eden this time, seeing as the first movie might as well plastered across the screen that it's so symbolically alike? Does the ending theme Aeonian give us any clues, or are there any people who've read the novels that may have a little insight? There's a lot of questions, and the final clue we have towards anything regarding plot and narrative are Angela's eyes. We can see something happening in the irises, but we don't know what. She's not AI, she's human which means she likely isn't accessing some kind of internal computer, and it seems equally as unlikely that she would be trying to hack into D.Va. So what exactly is happening? It's not a reflection either, because the colors we see are not part of the natural environment around her. That's really all we have to work off of, but this is such an underrated movie, and I'm thrilled that after a decade, it's finally getting a sequel. There are a lot of things still yet to come out about the movie, such as cast reprising their roles, and the potential for streaming services to pick it up, or even give it an English dub, but there's clearly some hype around the internet for this. If you want to be kept in the loop on all things EFP, Expelled from Paradise, hit that subscribe button and when more information is revealed, I'll be right back here. Thanks for watching and here's the dingo hopefully not being dead. Later.